to have Jonathan McKee here because he is like the king of practical stuff. And so we're, we're going to talk about uh, practical tips. At least a jester, at least. I oh, don't know. sure. The Duke. Whatever you I want. I don't know about yeah. king, but, you know. <laughs> well, he's written dozens of books. You've seen his stuff in the YS, YS store for a long time. You've been around Youth Ministry World for a really long time. A really important resource that he provides is the Source for Youth Ministry. It's an online resource for really practical stuff every week um, that's important. So, Jonathan, first, tell us a little bit of your story, and then we'll jump into practical ideas for small group leaders. Yeah, just uh, been in youth ministry about 25 years, started as a volunteer, and, uh, you know, we're talking about small groups tonight. I remember one of my first things as a volunteer was as a small group leader. As a matter of fact, a youth pastor handed me a group, you know, a set of small group questions and said, you know, here's your questions for tonight gotta go and then immediately there was like this talk we broke into small groups and I remember looking at the questions and going eh, and throwing them over my shoulder you've been there you've done the same thing and then just kind of starting to go on my own and I was talking and talking and they weren't listening and I remember thinking to myself way back then I remember thinking these stupid kids they're supposed to be listening to me because I didn't know that they weren't supposed to be listening to me. I was supposed to be listening to them. So been in youth ministry a long time, learned a lot of lessons. Most of the lessons I've learned have, are, are that way, finding out the hard way. Yep. And so uh, it's fun to kind of talk about some of those things. Yeah, so then let us in on some of those secrets of like the lessons that you've learned when it comes to new small group leaders and also just kind of how do you strengthen a small group if you've been a leader for a while? What are some ways we can revisit those uh, foundational Absolutely. things? Absolutely. Well, I mean, I, you know, a lot of, I mean, you know, looking out at small group leaders here, and a lot of us, we've seen small groups run really well. And a lot of us, we've seen small groups not run so well. You know, sometimes they're pure chaos, you know, and it just nothing's going right. And, we, and we've probably been in those moments. You know, what's, what's it that makes the difference between those? Because sometimes, you know, kids really seem to feel like they can share and they can open up. And it seems like a venue where they feel like noticed and heard. And, hey, this is a safe place where I can talk. And other times, you know, you've got that one kid who just, you know, won't shut up. And then, the, you know, the other kid who feels like they, they would love to share maybe, but they don't have an opportunity to talk. And so it's interesting as, as we see this because there's kind of, I mean, really, if you think about it, there's really kind of two main dynamics out there. There's small groups where uh, the leader talks on and on and on. Sure. And then there's the small groups where the leader actually facilitates conversation and creates a climate of conversation where people feel like they can talk and be noticed and heard. Yeah. So when, if, if we're wanting to create those conversational moments where we leave space for them to talk, what are some prompts? I mean, it seems like it all falls into good questions. Like yeah. you've got to have good questions. And Absolutely. Then how do you prompt them to, to open up a little well, bit I, more? I think so much of it is actually in understanding. Like I go back to that story with me. The guy handed me questions, said, good luck. And that was my training. We need to equip our leaders. And so if you're a small group leader, you know, um, or if you're the leader of your ministry, you know, don't forget to spread the word that the reason we're here is for dialogue, not monologue, you know. And that's the mistake we often make is we think, oh, you know, these young people got a lot to learn from me and all my wisdom and years of experience, you know. And, and I, as a 19-year-old uh, at the time, when he handed me these questions, I looked and I thought they were dumb questions. I threw them away and I'm like, okay, here we go. And I literally probably talked for like five to ten minutes. And at the, all of a sudden I'm talking about like evolution instead of whatever I was supposed to be talking about. And I'm looking around and they're bored silly. They're bored out of their minds. And I thought, you know, why aren't they listening? Well, they weren't supposed to be listening. I was supposed to be getting them talking. And so what we really need to do is we need to create these places where we get them talking. And, and most of it actually starts with small group leaders who understand I'm just a facilitator. I'm a person who's going to ask questions and I'm going to hush up. And then I'm going to let them actually talk. And, and if we can do that, if we can create a dialogue instead of a monologue, and let's think about it. That, that's, it, it can be a pride issue. They've got a lot to learn from me. It, it really is more of a humbling thing to say, no, um, 
you know, and think about it, a lot of small groups are, are uh, places where like maybe they've already heard a talk, they've already watched a video, and now's the time for them to, you know, digest this and talk about this and, and, and kind of and kind of think, okay, let's talk through this. Well, if we talk at them, we're we're kind of we're kind of you know taking away the power of a small group meeting. We're 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 snatching that away and turning it into another lecture. Sure. They don't need another lecture. Sure. They need someone to listen as they kind of say, okay, I had a question about that, or here's something I think about this. So we need to create that. And part of that is us being humble enough to understand the venue. And the venue of a small group is a place for dialogue, not monologue. So we need to constantly be about creating that. And a lot of that starts with us being, you know, asking that question and then being quiet and not being the lecturer. Oh, well, that's incredible, really practical advice. And in, in my experience, a lot of times uh, my small groups have been with junior high kids and I have a problem of getting them to focus, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? And yeah. so when are the times, maybe could you speak into the times that you need to stay, try to wrangle them in and then other times when you realize you know what, it'd be better if we just went and played dodgeball or yeah, if we no, just absolutely. went and got, grabbed Sonic Well, with middle school kids, I think it's also really cool to play dodgeball first and tire them out a little bit, <laughs> then talk about something relevant and meaningful in their life and then say, now let's divide and discuss this in small groups. Now, use, now realize, when we say the word small groups, I know those semantics, you know, might mean a lot of different things. For some people, small groups is simply like a guy talks and they go, now let's divide to small groups, you know, and it's and yeah. different kids every week. All the it's like, hey, whoever you're near, grab and we're going to talk. That could be small groups. I, I'm not hung up in the definitions here. It could be something where actually you have signups and you assign small groups. And so when you're done with showing the video or whatever you're talking, you go, now divide into your small groups that you know that you have. You're assigned small groups. That can be small groups too. I've seen groups where the the um, venue itself is small groups. It's on Tuesday nights, we meet in our home groups or we even have words like cell groups, right? So it doesn't matter these venues. The, yeah. the, the point is in any of these, I, I've been at camps where like I'll speak and then we divide for cabin time, right? Whenever you've got a group of kids, you know, usually in a circle and you want to try to facilitate conversation, when it comes to these small groups, um, you know, we want to try to create this arena where they feel noticed and heard. So back to your question, junior high kid, I'm hyper and whatever. You know, I'd get the energy out first. I try to do it. I talk about something meaningful. And then one of the really, you know, cool things that actually engages young people is if you bring something relevant to them and then you give them an opportunity to talk about it. Young people want to be noticed and heard. And if you create a place and that could be small group rules, it could be, I, I mean, I honestly have two small group rules when I have with middle school kids. I say, ready? It's going to be two rules. First rule, don't talk when anybody else is talking. Rule number two, don't be a turd. <laughs> and that's literally my second rule because, because junior high kids can be turds, you know? And you sit there, no, 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 you're being disrespectful, whatever. So I lay it out and I say, hey, when I'm talking, nobody else is. And then I will start the conversation and I'll say, hey, let's everybody, let's share our, you know, our, our name and our favorite place to eat. Okay, let's go to you. And second person, okay, I'm just, and all of a sudden yeah. they get a place where, hey, I get to talk, you know? That's cool for a junior high. Believe it or not, junior hires don't necessarily always like chaos because maybe that one loud kid who can take over and bully everybody anyway, but that, you know, a lot of kids that don't get a chance, don't have a place, they don't have this arena where they are noticed and heard, we're giving them a place where they get a chance where they can talk and communicate. And it's funny, I've seen this be life changing for kids. I've seen, I remember this kid, there was this shy kid, and I'll call him Toby. And, and, and Toby was this kid, a little bit homeschool, a little bit awkward, um, didn't really have, I'd say, a lot of friends in, in this particular youth ministry. And he uh, was in a small group of mine along with all these jocks. And you would think, what kind of mix is this? You got jocks, 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 and all of a sudden this really awkward kid. Well, it was neat because the first week, we just started out right away. And I, I started with one of my, okay, hey, uh, what's your name? And if you could buy any piece of technology right now and it'd be paid for, what would you get? And kids were just like, oh, you know, and people were like, I'd get new Xbox One, I'd get new, you know, and they were each yeah. sharing what they'd get one at a time. Well, when he talked, and he talked, literally, it was like the first time they had ever heard this kid's voice. Oh. I mean, honestly, and they were kind of like, and he talked about some video game he liked. Well, it's funny. Week after week, this kid got a chance to share because we had these small group rules where, where hey, when one person's talking to everybody else, so they kind of got to know him, and they would actually ask questions. Hey, when you were playing that game, what do you, what, you know, uh, what do you do when you get to this level? 
One week I show up and it's during the dodgeball portion of the evening and I'm there and I'm kind of waiting. We haven't divided a small group yet. And I see all these jocks in the corner surrounding this guy. And I thought, oh, I better go save him. They're punking him for his lunch money. You know, I thought for sure they were like bullying him or something. And I go over there and he's talking and literally they're practically taking notes. He's all, so on level six, you go in the third door on your left, pull out your shotgun. Now watch out. There's going to be a guy. And they're like, really? Now wait a second. Now do you, you know, and, and it was funny because he had befriended them through small groups and now they all saw him as this source of, you know, because he was homeschool and all he did is stay at home and play video games all day. But you know, they saw him this source of knowledge. This relationship would have never happened had it been for small groups, but small groups created this arena this safe place where everyone was noticed and heard. And for Toby, it uh, created some friends for him. Man, that's awesome. So then you, and you mentioned this several times of the need for training for our small group leaders. Yeah. Could you give like maybe one or two really quick ideas of what that could look like in a very practical, like what are the basics? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, I cannot say this enough. The need for our leaders to understand that it's all about dialogue it's not about monologue and there's some great trainings out there uh, a lot of you guys have heard of dym dym has these great training videos that are like 10 minutes long and they're only like three bucks and it's awesome because your whole team can watch this training video and there's one i actually did one on small groups where i give three small group tools um and one of them is duct tape and uh it, and it's a great thing where you could show your whole team and it'll kind of give them the ammo and you know what the gist of that video is it's really how we can create a place where young people are noticed and heard. So more than anything, we need to be able to look for those moments where we can keep our team fine-tuned with these basics. Because I, I'll be honest, I, you know, I, I do a lot of speaking, and I'll speak at a camp, I'll speak at an event, and so often the leaders will say, hey, Jonathan, can you provide small group questions so we can, you know, so we can really dissect what you said and, and talk about it in, you know, if it's a camp, in cabin time or at the event afterwards in small groups. And I always say yes, I always give them small group questions. But it's sad how often, and I just tell you, it doesn't matter if East Coast, West Coast, you know, Texas, Cleveland, it doesn't matter. No matter where I am, if I'm at a camp or I'm at an event and we divide to small groups, I'll go and I'll stand and I'll be like a fly on the wall just kind of listening on small groups. And here's what I'll see every time. I will see a bunch of kids sitting there leaning, you know, just like this, listening as some leader talks on and on and on and the kids are sitting there with an expression on their face like kill me you know I mean honestly and, and everywhere I go I see the exact same thing so the number one thing we're doing is we're not letting our leaders know and, and I, I was a victim of this too I was 19 years old I said here's your small group questions nobody told me ask a question and shut up and we as leaders we need to know that we need to know that hey this is a place where we can create conversation we need to focus on dialogue, not monologue. Can't emphasize that enough. Oh, well, these are really great practical tips. Let's thank Jonathan for helping us Thanks with so this much. idea lab. Good stuff.